Welcome to Life in Biology. I'm Dr. Joel Graff. And as we work our way through the COVID-19 pandemic, the question on a lot of people's mind will be, have I had the virus? Now, if, you have, if you're currently infected with the virus, you could be symptomatic or you could be asymptomatic. If you're symptomatic, you would probably get a test done. And once you got the results back, you'd know if you had the virus. However, if you get the virus and you're one of the people that's asymptomatic, you don't even know that you have been infected with the virus, then you need a different type of a test to figure out whether you have had the virus and whether you have immunity to the virus. So in this video, I'm going to explain the two different types of uh, assays, the ones that can tell if you've had the virus and the ones uh, that can tell whether you currently have it. So do I have COVID-19? We'll follow the arrows in the workflow this direction. And have I had COVID-19? We'll go in this direction. Now, SARS-CoV-2 is the causative agent of uh, COVID-19. And when a virus enters a cell, it uh, uncoats and releases its virus genome. The genome of SARS coronavirus 2 is positive stranded RNA virus. That means that it's essentially an mRNA when it gets into the cell and it can be translated by the host's translation machinery and converted in, or the RNA is read and proteins are made from the directions that were available in the RNA genome. These proteins of the coronavirus could potentially be detected by the immune system of the person that's infected with that virus. And if the immune system kicks in, the immune system starts to produce antibodies. So you have an antibody response. Now, down here, I've drawn some antibodies sticking to the coronavirus protein. And the presence of these antibodies would suggest that you have had the coronavirus infection at some point. The genome is only going to be present in the body when you're infected, and it'll quickly go away once you clear the virus. The antibodies that can detect the virus proteins will be in your body for a long time, and so those can be tested for after the fact. Now, just quick, do I have COVID-19? You do an assay to test that, to find the answer to that question, by first collecting RNA from a body sample, so it could be a nasal swab, and you do a, an assay called an RT-PCR. RT stands for reverse transcription, and that is an RNA-dependent DNA polymerase. It reads the RNA, and then it makes a second strand uh, of, of nucleic acid called DNA. So you have an RNA-DNA duplex here, and then the second step after the RT is a PCR. A PCR is polymerase chain reaction, and I won't get into the details of that, but it uses a DNA-dependent DNA polymerase and a bunch of cycling reactions to copy uh, and get more copies of the genome. When you have uh, lots and lots of copies of the genome, of the genome in the DNA form, you could use some fluorescence-based mechanisms to detect this. And so that is, that is the, do I currently have COVID-19? Have I had 19 is gonna focus on these antibody proteins. And so I'll talk about a couple of assays that can detect that. So uh, the first assay we're gonna talk about is generally known as an ELISA, which is uh, an acronym for enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. And how this assay works is you get a plastic bucket their wells on a plate is what we would say in the lab, but you get a little plastic bucket and you put some sticky paper at the bottom of the bucket. That paper will end up sticking to proteins. We can make the coronavirus proteins in the lab and so we can just automatically add in a bunch of coronavirus proteins into this well. Those will stick to the sticky paper and you throw in a second protein which could be, say, milk proteins, and those will fill in the gaps so that there's no remaining sticky paper to stick to. You've gotten rid of all that stickiness because what we're gonna do next is test whether the blood of the person has antibodies that can detect 
the coronavirus. And if we don't do this blocking step with the milk proteins, the antibodies themselves are proteins and could stick to the, uh, to the paper itself and give a false positive. So the sticky paper is coated with both coronavirus proteins and our milk proteins. Now, again, milk protein is just technical part of the assay. You can put in the serum collected from a person that has, uh, thinks they may have had coronavirus infection. And if they do have antibodies, I've drawn them as those green shaped Y's again, they will stick to some of the coronavirus protein. You wash away any antibody that didn't stick and then you come back into the well with the next uh, fluid that has the antibodies that have an enzyme linked to them. So the brown antibody there is an anti-human antibody. It will stick to the green antibody that stuck to, let me get in some, uh, that stuck to the coronavirus protein in orange. So we're building a stack here from coronavirus protein to protein from the antibody to of the patient that could detect the coronavirus protein to the next protein, which is called the secondary protein, which is can stick to the human antibodies. And that one has an enzyme linked to it. And in the final step of this assay, you add in a liquid that can uh, be chewed up by those enzymes that are stuck to the secondary antibody. Remember, the secondary antibody will only be there if they're a first antibody to stick to. So only if there is the green antibody will you, will you get a reaction. And that enzyme will break down the solution and cause a color change. And then you can read that with the machine that detects the color change. So uh, I'm starting out describing the ELISA first because it's a little bit easier to see that stack. Again, it goes coronavirus protein, antibodies that can detect and stick to coronavirus proteins, another antibody that can detect and stick to human, pro, uh, human antibodies, and then it has a uh, enzyme linked to it, and then you get a color change in that assay. So that's what an ELISA is, and it takes many steps, and it takes a couple different antibodies available uh, to do that. So that is a fairly labor-intensive method of going through samples, and I'm sure that at bigger hospitals they might have automated robots that could do this, but if you were to do this at a, a small hospital across the country, you would need a technician that has a good experience with that assay. The other type of assay that can detect the antibodies is a lateral, lateral flow test, and this uh, can also be called immunochromatography, okay? So if you're familiar with the at-home pregnancy tests, then you've done lateral flow uh, immunochromatography before. Uh, the difference there is that when you're pregnant, you would be detecting a specific protein in the urine that would indicate that you're, that you're pregnant, whereas in the assay that we're going to talk about here, we're not looking for for a pregnancy protein, we're looking for a protein in the form of an antibody that can detect coronavirus. So with that said, let's talk about it. So just like you would dip the pregnancy test in a, a cup of urine, here we've got where you put the sample at one end of your paper, that, and then um, we've got some traps set up for your antibodies as they start to diffuse. So if you drop some liquid on a paper, the capillary action is going to pull the uh, liquid up the paper and towards this direction. So the whole flow of this, this is chromatography, the whole flow is from left to right on this diagram. The, where you put the sample, that would be the serum, that is when you take blood from a person, get rid of the cells, and then let the clotting factors also get out of the way. The serum is where you would find antibodies. So you put your serum down and there's a bunch of antibodies there and then it starts flowing in this direction so those green antibodies start flowing. You've uh, added some uh, antibody to your, uh, to your paper already that, ha that can detect the 
human antibodies and they have those enzymes linked to them. So this time it's gonna be a slightly different enzyme, most likely, it could be the same. At any rate, as your if the patient has antibodies to coronavirus, the human antibodies that can or the antibodies that can detect human protein will basically hitchhike along with the uh, with the um, coronavirus antibodies, and then they're moving along, and you're going to have a couple different stripes set up, a couple of little sticky traps set up for uh, antibodies to stick to. Now, the, there is going to be one stripe on this that has the control. This will basically tell you, did the serum flow by and make its way through uh, the, the assay? And you'll get a colored stripe. If then there will be a second colored stripe that could occur or not, depending on if there is an antibody with the enzyme linked to it where you could potentially, let's say, put the coronavirus protein here. And if the coronavirus, if you have antibodies that stick to the coronavirus, they would stick to that coronavirus trap that you set up, and then you'd get a color change. So in the example I drew here, I have some proteins that you would just expect to have antibodies against uh, in the cell or in the sample, and then you would create it, you would be a positive control, so that one should always turn color. In this assay that I drew up, because I didn't want, because it was a lot of detail to get all those antibodies in, I'm giving an example of uh, a human sample that does not have antibodies against the coronavirus that was set up at this second sticky trap. So this person would not have a colored stripe here but would have a colored stripe here. Now on pregnancy tests, when they do this, a lot of times they have a minus sign if you're uh, not pregnant and a plus sign if you're pregnant. So if you, you can imagine, we could set up this trap uh, across this way on our uh, thing and it would be a minus sign or a plus sign if it was to let us know if you have coronavirus or not. So that's how you can get the two different minus or plus or in this version you just have one stripe or two stripes. So if we get those tests up and running we'll be able to test people know if they've had coronavirus and if they've already had coronavirus and maybe they're just one of the asymptomatic people then those people could go back to work or go back to school or go back to whatever it was doing before they uh, had to hunker down at home. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll link to some other coronavirus videos in the bottom. A couple are about um, uh, therapies that could stop uh, coronavirus replication and another one is comparing coronaviruses to influenza virus. Anyway, Hope you enjoyed, like and subscribe or not.